This video is part of the cybersecurity series of presentations. This presentation provides a discussion about phishing via emails, which is a common cybersecurity issue. Phishing is an email based attack in which the attacker tricks the recipient to perform some action in response to an email so as to obtain personal information or install malware on the recipient's computer. Phishing is an email-based attack in which the attacker sends a carefully crafted email to the recipient masquerading as a trusted organization or person. In response to this email, the recipient may send a response with personal information or visit a website with links in the email. And these websites are designed to look just like the original website motivating the person to enter their personal credentials and the attacker can get that information from the recipient of these phishing emails. Emails are sent and received using simple mail transfer protocol. SMTP is a simple text-based protocol. Basically, there are two servers. There is a sending server or a forwarding server that takes or receives emails from its local users queues up the email and sends it to the receiving server whenever a connection is established. The receiving server stores these emails so that the recipients can retrieve the email whenever they want to read it. So in, as an overview, there is a server that, to which local users can send emails using SMTP protocol. The local server then manages a queue of emails that are waiting to be sent out to different recipient servers. But each recipient has its own server, so the two servers interact with each other again via SMTP. And the receiving server stores all of the emails in a database or some local file system. And then the local users access their email using different protocols like POP3 or IMAP to read the emails. So all of the sending of emails is done using SMTP, and we'll do a slightly deeper dive into SMTP because it's a relatively straightforward protocol, and we can see how SMTP then can be used to generate phishing emails. Keep in mind, in order to find the server to where the email needs to be sent, the SMTP server uses what is known as mail exchanger or MX records that are part of DNS entries for the various organizations. So for example, if I dig the mail exchange record for miamioh.edu domain, I will get response from the name servers telling me the names of the different email servers associated with miamioh.edu. And typically, you'll pick up the email server with the highest priority or the lowest priority number in this case being one, and by default, we'll send email to this mail exchange server with the highest priority using the SMTP protocol. Note that the senders and receivers have logins on completely different servers, so sender could be in apple.com, receiver could be in miamioh.edu, vice versa. So it's not really possible to fully authenticate sender and sending and receiving users by the different servers because we don't have access to their credentials. So to re in order to reduce spam, these mail servers do perform some basic checks on each other. And it's the spam filter software on the receiving server that performs most of the checks to detect uh, spam or phishing emails. Let's do a demo of how the SMTP protocol works. Here from a terminal, I'm going to telnet to a mail forwarding server on port number 25. Telnet is just a program where you can type text and it'll be sent to the server. On connecting successfully, the mail server will send me a response. Then typically you will introduce yourself using the hello protocol command and the mail server will respond. And then you say mail from and you can type in the email address of the person who's sending the email. In this case, I'm just going to masquerade as someone else. Keep in mind that the um, SMTP server does not have a strong way to authenticate this because email addresses or login IDs can be different for different users on different computers. So there is no effective way to immediately validate this. Then you say, 
who the recipient of that email is and this is the uh, of course the email address of the recipient can be different the server will respond with an okay then you have to send the data which is the email that you want to send out notice that the server says you have to end the data with a um, new line which has just a PDF sign on it then you type in the data where you can add whatever information you want to send as part of the email here I'm putting information from who it's coming from, what the subject of the email is, and the actual message. And notice there's a period sign ending the data to be sent out. And this completes the email. And the receiving server will queue up the email to be sent to the recipient um, using the mail exchange records, and it'll send it to the recipient's email server. And then you can quit out of this process by typing the quit command. So this is a simple protocol where you simply type in text to the server and email is just a textual based interface. You can also do HTML by encoding it appropriately, but essentially you are sending and receiving text. Since it's just sending and receiving text, it's pretty easy to do it via email, uh, send emails via a program. So here we'll look at an example where creating a class called SMTP. And the class is going to have a input output stream. This is a boost input output stream, and we're going to use the TCP protocol to send and receive messages between the server. The constructor of this class is going to connect to the server. Here we have some default settings. You can always modify it by passing parameters to the constructor. We're going to have a helper method called send that is going to send a command to the server and optionally receive some um, result back from the server. Sending is pretty simple. You just print the string that needs to be sent to the uh, server stream. Optionally, we'll also get a response. Some of the commands that we send do not get a response from the server. So here, we are going to have um, a flag that tells us whether we want to get a response from the server or not. And if a response is required, this helper method reads a line and returns the line back to the caller. Now that we have these two pieces set up, let's look at how the send mail uh, operation will work. Here, we're going to have um, the send the uh, first uh, command hello with the host name. Um, you can, of course, call this with um, a from main with the um, sender's uh, name, email address, the recipient's name, email address, uh, the subject that we want to include in the email, and the message that we want to send. So here we'll say send mail from, um, given the uh, from email address, send the email who it needs to reach to. Uh, then we'll start the data part where you're going to send uh, the different parts of the email, which is the from address, the to line, the subject line. Notice that here we are not requiring a response from the server, so the false parameter is sent so as not to wait to get a response from the server. Then we send the actual message. And then we end the data with a uh, period on its own line. And then we finally send the quit command. And this completes the process of sending this email. So this is a simple C++ program that can be used to send and receive uh, email messages. I'll put a link to the full source code um, in the uh, comments below. Keep in mind, of course, you can change these parameters or you can automate these parameters to send out like hundreds or thousands of emails to different people. So this script can be easily modified to start generating spam on the internet. Of course, keep in mind, all of these commands essentially are mimicking the same operations that we did via the Telnet uh, protocol that we saw a couple of slides ago. Now that we looked at the program, let's do a brief demo of how this program works using the SMTP protocol. So I've taken the example that was just discussed in the previous slides, and I modified it to send out two different emails, one pretending to be from uh, Tim Cook, and another one pretending to be from the registrar uh, with uh, slightly different subjects, just to see how these two end up behaving when they are sent out as emails. So here I'm going to compile the program and then I'm going to run it and I'm also going to time the program to see how much time it takes. Here's the response messages that got sent out uh, that the server sent so I just printed it on screen and in this case it took about four milliseconds to send out a couple of different emails. 
So let me go see in my unread emails. There you go. I got my registrar email right there. So to me, where it says, please click um, the link below. Of course, if this were a um, phishing email, there would be a little bit more detail and somebody might fall victim to the phishing uh, scam. However, with my Tim Cook email, Google was good enough and it automatically figures out and most likely it would go in spam. And there it is, the email pretending from Tim Cook. And again, Google has detected that this email is not from uh, apple.com. Um, so it actually did not come from apple.com. It knows that. So it's marked it as spam. So that's how the spam filters often detect and protect us against phishing. Now let's look at how to mitigate spam and phishing. Keep in mind, email is compatible to regular mail. Uh, with regular mail, anybody who has your home address can send you mail, so you can get a lot of junk mail. The same goes for email. Anybody who has your email address can essentially send you an email. But we have some technology uh, countermeasures that we can use to reduce the amount of spam and phishing emails that we get. There are lots of spam filters and phishing software that can be used to mark uh, emails are being as spam or as uh, phishing emails. Antivirus help to detect and remove malicious attachments so that uh, attackers cannot install malware on your computer. And there are lots of lists known as blacklists uh, that are known uh, that maintain a list of known spam servers. So whenever we generate emails, a lot of the receiving email servers will look at the blacklist and will not accept emails from the known spam servers. Of course, in addition, it's always a good idea to use the routine common sense measures to protect yourself from spam and phishing. Be cautious of unsolicited emails. So when you get an unsolicited email, most of the time, the modern um, email servers will flag it as being phishing uh, emails and so on and so forth. So when you look at those, be cautious. Don't download attachments. And of course, when in doubt, it's always a good idea to check emails. So when you receive an email, you can go and look at it. You can mark it as being spam or report phishing, or you can look at the original email message, which has all of the headers and all of the information of all of the servers that this email has gone through. You will see headers where it was authenticated uh, for uh, by the receiving email server. You'll be able to see all of the additional information and the whole content of the email, raw content. And you can use this information to double check and validate to ensure emails are not spam or you're not being phished. In summary, phishing is a common email-based cyber attack. It happens every day and a lot of people fall victim to it. Uh, the objective here is to either download malware onto the user's computer, and this is how botnets are created, or to somehow maliciously acquire the personal information either by having the recipient respond to the email by replying to it or clicking links in the phishing email. Um, email, doesn't matter what it is, whether it's spam, phishing, they all use SMTP to exchange email. It's a simple text-based protocol, so it's easy enough uh, to automate and you can modify programs to easily generate spam for thousands of users. Countermeasures against spam and phishing um, are getting more and more sophisticated, but at the same time, the phishing attacks are getting even more sophisticated. Uh, there are lots of spam and phishing filters. These are run on the email servers to try and protect the recipients of the email. There are blacklists that a lot of the mail exchange servers will use to avoid receiving email from known spamming uh, servers on the internet. And of course, the most important thing is to use common sense safety practices by, and avoid uh, clicking on links in suspicious looking emails. And of course, when in doubt, it's always a good idea to check email headers. And sometimes it's good to check email headers for testing purposes and validating how um, emails are go flowing through. And sometimes you may have to do that to ensure that your own email doesn't get blocked by spam filters or phishing filters.